Swear it's been 700 degrees in here since you came in. Hi, I'm Jack Rogers. Welcome back to part two of this um, um, network build so we're going to sort of do. So we briefly went over the, the sort of server spec and chip away budgeting and buying servers. So we'll go a bit more into detail, a bit more further into our videos. So today I'm going to talk about networking. So what is required? So for a very basic network, nothing too complicated, even for like large amount of users, it doesn't have to be complicated on the switching side. A lot of new switches these days, I tend to sort of like, I like the D-Link uh, web um, switches, which I'll put a link below for you. Um, they're the best ones to buy money-wise anyway. Um, they have a lot of management console, uh, lots of configuration you can do. It has its own web interface. So you can literally connect into there and you can sort of like block stuff going across the network. So dial, denial of service, you can block. You can block if someone accidentally loops the network. So that, what that basically means is plug a network cable into the same switch either end because normally that will freak a switch out, but this will actually ignore it and then let the network carry on as well. Just in case you get one of those idiot users that, um, that unplugs this um, PC, decides to plug it back into the wall again, and you've got a loop, like a looping effect. Swi normal switches or basic switches hate it, but these web-managed ones, you can actually tell it to um, ignore it, so it disables the two ports that are involved, then the rest of the network carries on running fine. So there's a lot of stuff on these switches, which we'll go more into detail a bit later on, and I'll tell you why to go for these switches. They're pretty good. You can spend anything from like £50 for a workgroup hub. Workgroup hub is different to switches. Again, we'll do like a, a video on that a bit later. Uh, anything up to something like five, six grand on switches. You know, really complex stuff on them, which you don't really need. In an office environment, very basic switches. And these are the switches I tend to use myself, as well as for my um, my old clients that I uh, used to use them for as well, which is still in play today. And they're still being used today by my old clients. So now again, I pop and give them a quick call, see how they're going and stuff. but. You know, so still using the, the equipment I stuck in there quite a few years back. So quite robust. So I'm going to quickly show my home setup. So my home setup is a bit big for me, but it's um, servers I've um, uh, brought back from my old business that I've kept on going because I've got a lot of storage space on, and I use that literally purely for storing my YouTube videos on now and stuff, and holding all my music and my iTunes. I have a very big iTunes video library itself, and I need a lot of storage. So these servers are still, um, they're old, but they're working. And again, they use the same principle as if they were actually were actually on a customer site in the network itself. So there's no difference um, whatsoever. It gives you an idea of like how I get everything connected together, and how things are quite simple. So um, I'm going to keep these videos very simple, to the point, and cost effective as well. So if you want to buy expensive switches, you can do. If you're on a low budget, these are, this is a perfect video to keep watching and keep following as well. So let's go and take a look at my server room. I actually got a garage here where I do all my YouTube stuff here. And also I have, have a shed behind this garage which I sort of share with my mum, and that's where the servers are held, because obviously servers are noisy. They need to be in a cold environment, so what better in a shed in the bottom of your garden? So when it comes to the winter times, pack a cool, no aircon to worry about. When it comes summertime, I have to fit, I have to put a manual aircon unit in it to keep them cool. I they end up overheating, and uh, I, I use them a lot for my YouTube stuff, so it needs to be running and kept cool at all times. So, show something very simple, like the, like the shed, for instance. You can adopt this idea in the shed to adopt it into a smaller room or cupboard you have in an office that you can actually aside and say so we we'll use that as a server room. Uh, we'll also talk about racks as well because if you're building a network, so you're doing running the cables, you need to run the cables into something which you call patch panels. They need to be held into a rack. And obviously, if you've got like 15, 20 users in a building, or 15 users per building, or 20 users per building, in theory, you're looking at two, two network points per user, one for your data, and one for a phone port, if you want to use it as a, uh, as a separate phone, or two network points, just in case the user wants to use a desktop PC and a laptop. You know, that's always rule of thumb, two network points per user. So that all that cable has to come back somewhere, and all that cable has to be patched into a patch panel, so that normally gets installed into like either a small uh, rack that's up that normally puts up on the wall. Um, but if you're going to hold a, s a couple of servers in there, then it's great to get a half a rack, 
mount all your cables into there and then you've got plenty of spacing for shelving to put in all your other equipments like your network router, your switches and also your servers. Uh, and they're not very expensive. Again, I'll put the links below on racks, an ideal type of racks to purchase and buy because there are two types of racks. One rack is for cabling only, so it will have a door in the front, a glass panel door in the front, so there's no airflow through the cabinet itself. And then you've got ones that have like these perforated like holes in the gr like a grating grill for the door so it allows airflow through so the servers can sort of breathe nicely so that's the ones i would recommend if you're gonna have gonna be having a bit of everything put into there as well but if it's going to be dedicated for cabling because you're you've got like 500 um, points around the building to bring back then obviously you need a rack of its own for the cabling only um, so let's take a look at my shed and i'll show you what i got in there it's the same principle as whether you're small uh, network or and running as a big network. Um, the switch I've got in the shed, I believe it's a, a D-Link, we, um, it's web interface, and it has, I think it has 48 ports on it, so in theory I can have 48 PCs plugged into it, or I can, ch or I can chain another switch from it to uh, another switch. So that's sort of the principle of between two buildings, and I'll go more into that detail um, very shortly. So let's go and have a quick nip and have a look and see what I've got. As you see, it's a shed, it's quite a small shed. Um, there's plenty of room in here, um, but obviously I've kept everything to one side, so um, I still have use of the um, uh, shed here as sort of like gardening bits as well, but mainly that's where my servers are. So there, there, there's my servers just down there. They're the Dell servers I've brought back from the old business that I used to have. So they're still in good working order. They're, very, they're about six years old, so um, they're very old, but they've still got, they all got like five terabytes of storage space in each of the servers as well, so it's nice and easy. Um, so I, I make use of that for having for all my um, YouTube, uh, everything I record and stuff goes onto there so I can always record back all, all what I need. They're all fine print servers, so they're literally just a, like a storage based solution. So um, I thought I'd make use of it, it's old hardware, you know, it's not costing me anything and they're still running quite nicely. I can probably get a, still get a few more years out of it as well. So there we have it. So we've got that, we've got a keyboard and I obviously, um keyboard just on the side there so I can attach to it when I need to. Apart from that, there's no keyboards or uh, multiple mo monitors. It's just kept really s simple. In the background there, we've got that web um, D-Link switch we're talking about. It's a 48 port switch. So it's a bit dark in here. I've got no, no additional lighting at the moment. But here you've got, um, uh, that's the switch here, for 48 ports. It's a gigabit switch. So on the back of the server here, which is very difficult to show you because it's dark around the back. Um, the cable, you can see all the cables coming out the back and they're all coming into the switch here. So the main majority of the server cables itself is these gray bunched together cables here. Um, so they're, they're about a meter long, so they go for straight from the server, straight into the switch there. And each server's got roughly about two co two connection points each. So I've teamed the network cards up to it's about a two gigabyte network. So when I f save um, files to the network, it's very, very quick. So, um, and then from here, the, the actual BT router's in the house. So it come that comes in by cable, which is up on the wall here. Straightforward, comes in from the wall. So it goes out the wall here, it goes up a line outside and into the uh, into my home. So that's in theory a bit like doing um, two buildings together. So you run that like what we call an uplink. So you run one from the one the main building. So you pick a building, you'll be cabling all two and housing the servers. Then you can then install cable that comes across um, between the two buildings. Um, this one comes down, goes straightly, directly into the switch. Um, and I have a switch upstairs as well, um, which this switch is to join. So they're both on the same network. So same principle having um, like two, two offices. So you have a switch in each office, and then you use like this uplink cable, as I said. I, I would install at least two or three uplink cables, um, just in case you're gonna put um, phones over it, or, or again, redundancy, just in case one cable snaps for any reason. Uh, someone a rat chews through it. Then at least you got you can got a backup cable to lay in there, rather than have to try and uh, lay the whole cable itself. This shed needs a bit cleaning up because it just it, it is home to lots of little spiders and stuff. So it really needs um, repainting and um, clearing out and sealing it off as well. But it's, you know, the servers have been here for a couple of years now, and they've actually done quite quite done everything I need to be done. But they do require a little bit more maintenance and because I can get a few more years out of that. I don't want to invest into big storage NAS boxes just yet because they are expensive, especially the storage size that I need. So why there's still life in this, this on these little machines and I keep on going. So that's basically what in theory what you need. So roughly that sort of size space. 
to hold and host your servers in. So in theory, you can get a rack. A rack is normally about the same width as these servers, okay? And they're the same, they're the same deep deepness into the rack as well as the length of the servers. Um, so they're not, it's not terribly big. It's on casters, so you can have all this, all the cabling coming from all your network, um, like all your desktops, into the rack, which will then have a patch panel. We'll show you what patch panel is and how you do it and stuff. Because this, because I only have like one PC uh, or a Mac in the house, that I, I connect to the servers with. I normally have a laptop, which is over wireless. I haven't got many cables running back into the house, apart from what that major, that main one there connects into the switch. Uh, back into the, the the living room goes into the internet and then I have one that going upstairs to my Mac into another switch so I can have like some more ports upstairs if need be but um, this is simple so this is a sort of solution you could use for small offices so if this was a small offices um, I could house um, a few thousand uh, users on this no problems at all and again it all depends on what type of switch you install how powerful your servers are to how many n number of users you can actually have. And most of the stuff I'm going to show you what to build it will, be, will be able to hold at least three or four hundred users easily on it for you. No problems at all. And again, everything's, everything's quite upgradable too. So, and then obviously in here, I don't know if I can show you because it's quite close. This this unit here is my little portable aircon unit. So um, when, when it's summertime and it's really, really baking hot in there, I actually um, fit that in there and I switch on. And during the night, when the um, when it gets cooler, I turn it off. So very simple things. So servers do require uh, aircon units. Why this is shed is very basic. It's a brick brick shed, and obviously when wind's blowing, it blows through the shed as well to create some nice sort of cool atmosphere during the winter times. And obviously when it gets really cold in there, it's fantastic for the servers. But obviously when it comes summertime, it really needs cooling down. So I'm trying to insulate it for summertime. So when I cool it down, uh, all the aircon doesn't go out through the gaps in the roof and stuff, so it holds it a lot longer. I end up paying quite a bit more money on electricity. But there, there's my little setup. These, this purple cable here, this runs up the wall and goes all the way along here, and it actually goes outside, and that actually goes off to my shed. So if you look at my shed over, over there, you can see it running across the fence. Let me show you. So it runs across the fence here goes up the wall goes all the way along and goes round and then it goes into the shed and that's my um, two uplink cables from the shed so I can actually gain access to the servers while I'm actually in the garage itself especially for doing YouTube videos and stuff or if I decide I don't want to work in the bedroom but I'll show you quickly um, the uplink that goes into the house let's close that shed off so there's there's cable running across so this is similar to running if you had two buildings so pretend that was a build one office building this was an, another office building and this is what you would run the cable between find a, a nice easy route like which i got here up and obviously then on the shed here i had to drill a hole into the shed about here to run the cables through this cable here runs up to my bedroom um which connects to another switch it's untidy at the moment but that i'm gonna actually get it all up tidied up but as here this is the cable that runs out of the house which is normally plugged into the router indoors and then that goes up and this is what you'll use between two buildings there's a cable metal cable there connected and allows the cable to run across it all the way down to the shed and then it, then you'll see in the shed it's actually um, screwed up on the wall so we have a nice nice thick metal cable here then the cables are resting on so there's no tension to the cables in the wind because the metal cable itself that's pinned to the wall here keeps it nice and sturdy so we've got one telephone uh, cable here we've got our in internet and we've also got the power to the shed that goes in here keep the ethernet cable and telephone cable away from the power line if possible but on this situation it's difficult when you're doing it i'm using a standard internet cable but you can buy uh, outdoor ethernet cable which is normally comes in like a black strand like this has a bit more insulation so it can be protected against like power lock cables as well they do give off out some sort of like uh, interference and it can cause issues as well but luckily enough, i'm being okay here so that's it so that's um very the principle of actually has connecting two buildings together but we'll show you more details on that anyway so we'll get a bit more down to um to show it last time in here sorted 
Right, this is my setup. So it's the same principle as an office. So look at my shed, it is like office one. Get garage we're in now, office two, and my house is office three. There's there's about 15, 20 meters cables running between the two of the between all three buildings. So I've got um, ports in here that I can plug into because obviously I've got my screens here that I do like look builds and PC builds. So I need um, internet access from here and access to my service from the shed, which is over there behind you. Um, so this has a couple points in. And that these cables run from here back to the shed. So I have two cables in here that runs back to the shed, and I have a cable that runs from the from the um, house back to the shed. They all plug into that switch you saw on the wall. So um, in the house and here, I can access the servers. So it's the same principle as if you've got in if you've got two offices or three offices that are close together. There is um, there is a cable length issue with Ethernet. It's no more than 80 meters. So you've got to make sure from where you're running the cable from to the other building where it's going to be sort of like connect, uh, eventually put, put on ports on the wall. You've got to make sure that's no more than 80 meters in length. But we'll talk more on that on the video because the next video I'm going to actually do is talk about more about the Ethernet cables, cons and pros, uh, where to purchase and buy and obviously what type of cables lay between two buildings because if it's, if it's more than 80 meters, you're looking at fiber optic cable. But we'll talk more about that on the next video that we're gonna do. So I just wanna quickly show you what I had here because this sort of um, network is the same way we go to a big business or a super large business or a small office. It's very similar in size. You, you got, you got servers, you got a switch, you got cabling, and you got users and PCs. It's the same principle, no matter whether it's small scale or large scale. And so I just wanted to give you a bit of an overall on this side so you get an idea of what you're getting yourself into. And the next video we'll start talking about cables, switches, um, equipment to purchase and buy, where to buy them from, and why to buy them, and cons and pros as well. So uh, I'm trying to get these videos nice and short so you don't get bored. So if you like like these videos and you want, want to got any questions, any questions at all about networking, what we've done today on this video here, please comment below. If you like this video, put your thumbs up, click on the thumbs up button. And uh, what we'll do is we'll link these, all these um, videos together. So they'll be up in the top kind of corner here on like a playlist. And I'll see somewhere over, the, no, over that side on the YouTube page, we'll create a playlist and keep them all bunched together. And we'll keep it in a nice series. And if you've got any questions on, on about this video or the last video we did, please let me know because the next video we can address them as well and we keep processing these forwards. I'm trying to get these videos created daily so we can actually get all this um, sorted and done and any questions you've got we can it'll help build and hopefully fine tune these videos to make it sort of more accurate and useful for everyone else who's actually watching as well. So um, thanks for guys watching and uh, so next video is going to be more about, about the switches and a bit more, well, the next video will be about cablings, then we'll do one on switches, and eventually then we'll talk about the servers, then put everything together, um, and then making it work. So thanks for watching, guys. See you soon. Cheers.